We all know that war is inevitable. It can happen in the blink of an eye without any notice. And what do we need to fight wars? Soldiers. Many citizens sacrifice their lives to fight in wars they may never return from. These brave warriors, although trained in the military, are ultimately the same as we are. Humans with limited strength, agility, and intelligence. But what if there was a way to turn these normal soldiers into super soldiers with special abilities? As technology becomes more and more advanced, so is the possibility of real life superheroes. Here are seven instances of science developing real super soldiers. The first instance is a DARPA funded project called the Warrior Web. DARPA is an agency of the United States government responsible for military technology. Warrior Web's goal is to create an exoskeleton suit that soldiers wear under their uniform, enabling them to walk, run, jump, and climb with ease. An electric motor and a backpack power straps and leg braces controlled by a computer that senses the soldiers' movements and amplifies their speed and agility. It feels like being pushed along by the wind. Having the suit can help soldiers in battle by increasing their speed and delaying fatigue. It's a breakthrough in bionics that may lead to bigger and better exoskeletons in the near future. Besides making military exoskeletons, the manufacturer Exobionics also makes suits for injured, paralyzed, or stroke-impaired civilians. So this military technology can also help people in the public sector walk again. The second instance is by using drugs. Drugs have been present for a long time now, and more and more powerful ones are being made as I speak. Recently, an amphetamine called Captagon came out that enhances awareness, alertness, concentration, mental performance, and even stops fear. In the 1960s, doctors used Captagon to treat narcolepsy and depression, but it was banned because of too many negative side effects. Now it's been re-engineered and fed to soldiers to keep them awake for days without feeling tired. In war, active, attentive soldiers could mean a difference between victory and defeat. There's another super soldier drug called Meldonium, used by Soviets to turn them into super soldiers. Invented by a 69-year-old Latvian chemist for Soviet troops in Afghanistan, Meldonium increases soldiers' oxygen capacity and boosts their endurance, allowing them to perform better than others doing things like like climbing mountain ranges and hand-to-hand -hand combat. The third instance is recent news from the Pentagon, the headquarters of the United States Department of Defense. The Pentagon states that Russia is secretly creating enhanced human operations technology, also known as bionic superhumans. These superhumans will not only be stronger, faster, and deadlier, like the other countries using exoskeletons and robotics, these Russian bionic super soldiers will be deadly on a biological level. Russia wants to genetically modify humans to become stronger and more powerful than ever. The Pentagon claims Russia is implanting computer components into soldiers' brains to make them obey orders. So Russia is literally trying to control these soldiers' minds. And not only that, they're also testing injecting nanotechnology into soldiers to help them heal faster, control weapons and prosthetics with their minds, and more. This is pretty much a whole new level of superhuman and seems very unethical. Overriding a person's free will with cybernetic implants? Come on. Now, this is not only happening in Russia, but it seems that both Britain and the United States are also experimenting with similar projects involving implanting cybernetics into humans. Even if such methods do make soldiers powerful and grant military advantages, is this the morally right thing to do? The fourth instance is by super small nanobot implants. Ray Kurzweil, an inventor working on Google's machine learning project, says that these tiny robotic implants in the human brain can connect us to computers, basically giving us access to unlimited knowledge wirelessly. This expansion of knowledge will make soldiers seem like gods, boosting their intelligence levels and enabling them to download new data as they need it on the battlefield. Like Neo learning Kung Fu in the Matrix movie, soldiers would be able to wirelessly and quickly learn new skills, get live updates of enemy locations, securely communicate telepathically with mission headquarters, and much, much more. Nicholas Negroponte, founder of the MIT Media Lab, says that the best way to interact with the brain is from the inside. If you can inject robots into the bloodstream, they can get close to cells, nerves, and all that is in the brain. Negroponte states that you can load information into your bloodstream via these nanobots in order to give you any type of information you want, such as an entire language. These nanobots could turn soldiers into superhumans with the ability to obtain any information they like. And remember, a G.I. Joe said, knowing is half the battle. The fifth instance is the U.S. military DARPA again, making computer chips that enhance soldiers' senses. Much like the instance of the Russia government and its mind control research stated earlier, the United States is also working on an implantable chip that connects soldiers' brains directly to audio and video sensing devices. The chip is about one cubic centimeter in size and implanted into the brain. And the new upgrade has the goal of improving brain neuron interaction up to millions at a time by sending the brain more auditory and visual information. Imagine seeing things in ultra HD the 4K with high dynamic range, night vision, heat vision, x-ray vision, super zooming and hearing things in all directions from far away, tuning into radio waves and more. Talk about super sensory abilities. It would be a huge advantage for soldiers in the field, allowing them to outperform all their enemies. The sixth instance is pain alleviation. Things that really affect a soldier on the battlefield are pain, wounds, and excessive bleeding. So DARPA hired a biotechnology company to come up with some solutions. To stop pain, they made an injection allowing soldiers to feel no pain 10 to 30 seconds after getting hurt.
hurt for up to 30 days. This way, soldiers can keep fighting without pain. To stop a soldier's bleeding, they made an injection of millions of tiny nanomagnets that would help iron blood cells clot wounds faster. Last but not least, another idea to alleviate pain was to allow the soldier to go into hibernation. Yes, you've heard me right. Scientists are coming up with ways to put soldiers into a hibernation state, just like a bear, whenever they get shot or wounded. Slowing the metabolism down would buy soldiers time for medical rescue without quickly bleeding to death when their heart is racing from pain, panic, and the adrenaline of battle. These inventions can make soldiers much more tolerable to the physical costs of war and help them to survive and fight longer. Last on our list is something that might shock you. Chinese scientists have already genetically modified human embryos for the second time. The embryos used were supposedly ones unable to grow into adults. A group of scientists from Guangzhou Medical University in China added a DNA mutation, making the embryos resistant to the HIV virus. The experiment was only partially successful, but this breakthrough was a huge eye-opener to scientists everywhere. If scientists are able to genetically modify humans successfully, they could make any kind of super soldier they wanted, one resistant to all drugs, diseases, wounds, etc. Such a soldier would literally be unkillable. Along with the other future inventions like brain implants and exoskeletons, soldiers would be more terrifying than ever. Science today is more advanced than ever, which means crazy developments are ongoing at this very moment. Super soldiers may benefit the country and help it win wars, but the ethics of creating super soldiers also needs to be considered. Modifying our natural body with artificial things can have serious potential risks that we may not yet realize. These super soldiers may be very capable, but are they morally right? Thanks for watching. See you next time.